Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is going to be Mutant Crops. Mutant Crops is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play the game. In the game, we're going to be playing as mo farmers for Mutant Crops, except these crops obviously are mutated and so they don't mind dining on pretty much anything, including meat. And as, as you can see here, there's going to be a plethora of different uh, mutant crops you'll be trying to cultivate and harvest throughout the game. Now you're going to be uh, scoring points for every single crop that you grow and all the objectives you complete on the crops. And as you continue the game, you're going to be trying to grow as many crops of either the same type or different varieties depending on the different cards you choose to pull and cultivate. The better you do, the more points you're going to score and the more likely it is you're going to win the game. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like to play Mutant Crops. So here we have the game Mutant Crops, and as you can see, it is a small worker placement. These are going to be the character cards. You can choose any of these. And what that means is if you're playing a two-player game, you'll use these three pieces here, for uh, one for one, one for one player, one for another. However, if you're playing a three or four player variant of the game, you would actually remove these guys here and everybody would get two farmers a piece. You're also going to be using this, whether that's the two-player version or the three-player. And these signify who the first player is. It's going to be starting it off and then each and every round of the game and then finally the action in which these two cards will get flipped over and every single there's three rounds in the game total so it, this would happen once this would happen the second time and this is the third and final time then the game would end and so this is going to move across here so it's kind of useful like that you have three of these guys out you shuffle the mutant crops deck place three of them out and this is going to be the deck of cards that will fulfill whenever these get removed you're going to also get tokens watering tokens feeding tokens and these little uh of, I guess these little planting seed tokens, which you'll be buying stuff with. Uh, over here are the six starting uh, cards in the game, and you get to choose between either of these two different actions when you're playing. And it's going to go simply like this. If I was playing a two-player game, I would move these guys away. I would select the green, and I would select the yellow player, and these guys would be removed. And each player would get their meeples. And on the first turn, you'd simply take one of these guys and pick any of these spots you want. If she goes there, he goes there, he'll take two food. And then this person can go over here and take two seedlings. And then he would go, and then this would move, move here, all right? And then he would go ahead and select maybe this, and he gets one of everything. It's a pretty straightforward worker placement, right? And she would go ahead and say, hmm, maybe I want to go here, three water and take these. And then he says, okay, maybe I want to sow, which means you choose a card. And it's gonna tell you the cost of the card up there. So this would go here. And he would take that card to use for uh, later, at the end of the game, that's how he scores and stuff like that. And then she would finally go over maybe here, two, to rotate the crops. Maybe she doesn't like any of these things here. So that simply means she gets two of any of these type of resources, and she gets to put them down on her thing. And then these guys would all get removed and shuffled up, and then new cards would then be dealt out in the front row here. Depending on the number of players, how many different crops will be out too. So. That is the basic idea of the game. After three actions have gone through, you take the next two cards in the stages and flip these over. And it lets you do more interesting things. Now, a couple rules are simply that you can move pieces that are already on the board. You don't have to move pieces. If you, already, if you have them off, you don't necessarily have to put them on the board. You can simply move around the pieces you already currently have. That won't change the fact that it's still gonna be three rounds, but you can lock up spaces in this game so that players never get to them. This might be the only time this space is ever used because this player might never move this character here, this farmer. And so when new places open up, players can start switching around. Now there's three main abilities. It's feeding, watering, and sowing. Those are the three things you're going to be doing. Sowing is picking up the cards and, and uh, having them for the end of the game. Watering and feeding represent these little areas here. Whenever you water something, you have to pay the cost of it, and then you're going to put a water symbol on that card, and that will signify you're going to either get bonus points or an ability, like at the end of the game, gain one point for each of the charred cards you have, including this one. So there's points you're going to be gathering from feeding and watering these plants, and certain ones require feeding, and certain ones require watering. And as you go throughout the game, you're going to gain more and more plants. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to win. And remember, you don't gain points unless you actually have 
fed and or watered the plants here. Sometimes you'll get bonus points. If like you have a chard and it has been watered, right, and fed, that would give it two, three, and then four points. And if there was another chard that wasn't watered, fed, or anything like that, then it would actually get five points, but nothing for the other chard. So you're trying to gain those points. This is pretty simple, right? Whoever has the most points at the end of the game of mutant crops is going to be the winner of the game. So Mutant Crops is basically a worker placement game. It's a mini worker placement game, but with a lot of choices. It reminds me of the game Pigment, which I reviewed last year. Pigment's an excellent little game that involves worker placement, but it has fewer choices than this one. So it's like a mini game compared to a mini mini game. This one has quite a lot going for it because there's plenty of different crops you can get. You've got broccoli, peaches, onions, eggplants, cucumbers, melons, peppers, uh, pumpkins, chards, pears, so quite a lot actually. And they all have their own unique abilities. Some of them are going to be end of game abilities that give another player, um, if, if another player has sowed, uh, uh, choose another ability a player has sowed and copy that ability. At the end of the game, if you sow a pear, you get three coins or three points. And if you sowed a strawberry, you get four. At the end of the game, gain one point for each of your onion cards and so on and so forth. Pretty simple, right? Just gonna be tallying up the points. The real trick to the game is when you're gonna be placing down your meeples onto the locations and trying to block your opponents from being able to play the things they want and take the things they need. Oh, they need water, so you're going to limit them because instead of them getting, getting the average or getting a two or a three, these are going to be blocked off so now that they can only get one. And that's going to benefit you because it's going to slow them down. That might be a good idea or just simply going gangbusters on all the things you specifically need. That That's also a strategy as well. Let me strategy in which of the different vegetables and fruits you're going to be picking and how you're going to be using them to score bonus points. While your opponent has a chard and chard gives bonuses to all chard, you could let them have that provided you're going to get more points by getting a peach or a strawberry maybe. However, it could be an option to take that card instead. The graphics are cute. They look good. It just reminds me of little evil mutant plants. So that really works out. It's cartoony and fun. And I do enjoy this game. I think I'd even read higher than pigment to be honest. It's a game that has a little more depth in it, a little more clarity and all the different components added are very nice for such a small game. It's a travel size box and it works very well as you can see. Pretty easy. Uh, I think Atheris Games did an excellent job with this game. I really really enjoyed it and I think that it will be in my collection for some some time provided nothing terrible happens.